Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 14th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In diaries from this weekend, we got an interesting one by Rob about pillaging the clipboard. Of course, a lot of users are copy-pasting strings, in particular hard-to-type ones like complex passwords. So Malware certainly has caught on to this for a while now and tends to monitor the clipboard and then steal certain strings from the clipboard. There have also been some cases where Malware was looking, for example, for Bitcoin addresses, which is another string that's often copy pasted. In this case, the goal wasn't so much to steal the address. That's the public part, but instead modifying the address. So then the victim would inadvertently send Bitcoins to the wrong account. From a defensive point of view, there isn't really that much a user can do about all of this other than, well, uh, not getting infected with uh, malware in the first place. On the other hand, a lot of password managers, for example, try to keep the data on the clipboard limited. Uh, I know the one password manager I'm using, now that's on Mac OS, will automatically delete a password after it's being pasted. Also delete them after a certain amount of seconds have been passed. Now, Rob talks a little bit about this in Windows and states that this is not necessarily always working as intended, in particular, if you enable the clipboard history. In this case, when software tries to overwrite, meaning delete the clipboard, they're actually adding a new empty entry to the clipboard history, which in some ways is sort of the intention behind this feature in Windows. Also a couple good uh, user comments about uh, this particular diary by Rob. And just uh, one comment from me, the fact that uh, you can steal the clipboard if you have malware running on the system, I wouldn't take that as sort of a reason not to use a password manager and copy paste from the password manager. Typically an attacker with this level of access would also be able to run a keystroke logger. So at that point, it wouldn't really make much of a difference if you directly type the password. And then we have actually sort of a leftover story from last week, and that's a critical vulnerability in Palo Alto's Pan OS. This allows arbitrary remote code execution by unauthenticated attackers. Now, in order to exploit this vulnerability, either the captive portal has to be enabled or multi-factor authentication has to be enabled. So it's not that this is only exploitable if you have multi-factor authentication enabled with the captive portal. There's an or here in the advisory, which is sort of unfortunate that multi-factor authentication exposes you to this critical vulnerability. I would not recommend turning off multi-factor authentication in response instead Please patch your Palo Alto devices and typically Palo Alto is pretty good in getting into contact with customers and notifying them about these updates. And ESET Security is reporting that they're observing attacks against soft switches. These are voice over IP switches that are pretty much implemented in software on top of Linux. They're distributed under the brand name of LinkNet. And apparently the main purpose of the malware after it's being installed on these vulnerable systems is to steal call records. What's really special about this is that the malware itself appears to be rather unique. So it's not yet another version of Mirai or uh, one of these other uh, common uh, Linux uh, malware samples. A little bit unusual too, but going with the times, uh, this malware is written originally in Go and then uh, compiled. ESET does not uh, know why they're exfiltrating these call records. Of course, there could be some form of ransom or so being demanded later. 
And then we do have an exploit for CVE 2020-1472. This is a Active Directory privilege escalation vulnerability that was patched by Microsoft in August. Microsoft originally rated this vulnerability as less likely to be exploited, but uh, well, it uh, took only about a month. So better make sure you're up to date. And then a little curiosity over the weekend, we had the rollover from 1.5 to 1.6 billion seconds since the Unix epoch. So that's the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. There's always a chance that some lazy input validation or so is checking that a timestamp starts with 1.5, which of course will no longer be true and that happens about every three years splunk for example earlier this year did patch a problem that was related to exactly this problem so if you had some splunk issues this weekend double check that you have this patch installed and is it for today so thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye